Hello and welcome to a recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today was a little bit of a battle. It took about three hours to get through uh, some relatively small changes in the scope of uh, what we're trying to accomplish. But let's take a quick look. Some really interesting stuff uh, I hope I'm able to convey here. So the decision was that on the Western Friend website, we would like people to be logged in before they can subscribe to the magazine. So how to enforce that, how to create a flow where the user, um, when visiting the subscribe page, is presented uh, with the opportunity to log in or register uh, based on uh, the fact that it's an anonymous user, whereas they would see the subscribe form if they're already logged in. So let's take a look at the anonymous user um, scenario. Well, I can here just log in, and I have a number of test users. Uh, let's just log in with my regular user, my primary test user. So then it shows the subscribe form. So this is the same case if I were to you know, navigate around the website and then say, oh, I'd like to subscribe. It would just immediately render the subscribe form in that case since I'm already logged in. Let me log out. And the difficult part today was the registration form, how to embed that in line. So kind of the user's not really taken away from the subscribe field. It feels like they're just writing the, the same um, context. They're not redirected to another field uh, form and then redirected back. Uh, also, it's very difficult uh, to do. There's a form for site registration, but you can't really tell it to redirect after the user's been registered, unfortunately. Whereas with the login form, there's this next equals uh, query string that allows you to redirect. Uh, so let's Take a quick look at the field. It's just a normal registration field with register test user eight. Some kind of strict password requirements. There we go. Yep, and now they are presented with the subscribe uh, form. So keeps you in place. Uh, it's a multi-step registration process. After submitting the subscribe form, you're uh, redirected to the payment form, but we've already reviewed that. Let's take a look at the code here. So on this subscribe now page, uh, the first thing I did was we have this index. Uh, so I renamed this um, this file actually. So when you're rendering the subscribe page in our project, it's an instance of what's called a subscription index page, which can only have one instance. Uh, the reason for that is so that the editor uh, can give an intro text and some content panels. Uh, I'll log out just and uh, log in as my kind of admin user so you can just really quickly see that. Um, so now I have this little wagtail widget and if I edit this page, I can just give some friendly um, text to encourage people or say any kind of details about the subscription process that they might need to know up front. So that text just appears above the form. So that's the whole reason for um, putting it in a wagtail page model and I just for clean uh, code kind of as I was creating several um, HTML templates which we'll look at in a moment I just renamed the file and so wagtail allows you to override the auto gener generated uh, or the default template name. Okay so here's the code uh, we're just playing the page title and conditionally, we want to display a registration form. Uh, let's see. So if they're not authenticated, <laughs> we have nested conditional here. We want to check if they're registering or else show this login required text. So let's log out again and take a quick look at that. Uh, so this user is not authenticated. So they're not authenticated. And they are not registering. It's not. They haven't clicked this button. So we will just show this login required field. If I click the register button, then we have this 
argument here in the URL. We'll take a look quickly at the view code. This is where the bulk of this stuff is happening. So register equals true. Then it knows to display this registration form. We'll look at the view code in a minute. Otherwise, if they are authenticated, we'll just show the subscription form. That is what they're here to do is subscribe. We just had to interject a couple of other um, optional steps. Let's look at the template code and then we'll go to the view. So the login required form is straightforward, a bootstrap card with a couple of links. I've been hard coding the links. I have an idea about how to, how to get around this in the future. Um, and particularly the link to the subscription page. Uh, and I could probably find programmatically uh, how to generate the accounts links, but that's not subject to change, whereas the subscription view is. Uh, so I admit this is not the cleanest code. But essentially all we're doing here is creating two buttons that link to the corresponding view to log in or the subscribe view with the registered true argument so that this form knows to render. We then needed to create a form to re um, register this registration form. And for some reason I had to override this user creation form um, just to display the email field, but more so uh, to get the form to validate. It, it might've validated otherwise. I think it wasn't though. The email might've been required and the form was never validating because I wasn't rendering it. That could have been the, now that I think about it, could have been the cause of like 30 minutes at least of just like, what is going on? <laughs> All right. Anyways, made it over that hill. Uh, so when you're defining, uh, you know, Django form, we're just taking this user creation form from the uh, auth, uh, the contrib auth module, and um, using the default user model. We're going to override that in the future. And so we need username, email, password twice. Cool. Let's take a look at the register form. So we pass this form here, this user registration form, into register HTML over here, uh, the registration form. And I'll show you the view again on how this all wires together. I know there's a lot of moving parts. It's a little bit ambiguous even for me having just written the code. But uh, the form is called form at this point. I could call it registration form um, for clarity. Uh, but that's you know not necessary. And there's just some pretty clean way for field and form just render the field with crispy form. Not a lot of code to do that. Crispy form provides a lot of uh, just helper functionality here. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge that I did initially use simple is better than complex, the code by Vitor Freitas, to get uh, a few steps down the road, but have significantly transformed the code. I was also referring to this article, Create Advanced User Signup View in Django, step by step. September 28th by Reverse Python. Both really good articles, very helpful. And Stack Overflow, of course, and I made sure to upvote along the way. So let's look at the meat here, the bulk of the changes, the, where it was the most difficult. So the first thing in the, when rendering the subscribe page, we need to pass in those forms through the page context so that the um, they can be rendered via crispy form in the templates, those template imports. So since these forms are sort of re referencing models uh, that may or may not exist when this function is uh, called or when this file is uh, sort of invoked uh, prior to calling this function, you ha we have to do our imports inside of these um, the functions where they're called, where the forms are used. So that's something that wasn't obvious at first. It's probably an easy uh, gotcha. So to avoid circular dependencies, you need to import your forms inside of the functions, particularly if they're using Django models, if it's a model form. Uh, this is maybe somewhat specific to Wagtail or just Django views in general, uh, which we'll see down here. Okay, so great. Uh, we get the regular context for the wagtail page view because again we're rendering a, a page instance and we check if this uh, register equals true here we get that parameter and check if it's truthy which a string is truthy I know this is just a string it's not an actual boolean 
value. I didn't uh, quite figure out another way of making that more uh, sort of robust. But in any case, if that query string is present, we will add to the context the registration form right here, which has just been imported. And we're also going to add the subscription create form to the context. It's probably not necessary to do that. I could put it in an else clause and returning the context because we don't render it in that case. But in any case, it's there. And the next part, which has been factored into two sub functions, which contain the most of the work, uh, just for clarity of code, I tried to make the function as small as possible and move uh, the different differences into their own corresponding parts. The, this is an interesting thing about Wagtail. So with Wagtail, it wires most of your stuff up for you, your URLs, your views. Uh, it'll even render uh, forms in the admin for you. Uh, you get a lot of functionality without having to think about it or learn about it, which can be a little bit of um, challenging when you're encountered with those concepts later, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, so this serve function essentially operates as what, uh, the Wagtail equivalent of a view. It needs to return an HTTP response or redirect, response redirect. That also was a little bit problematic. So inside here, we're seeing if we're, the user is submitting the form or not. If they're not submitting the form, then we're just going to render uh, the request, which will essentially, it'll just serve up the page with the context. Uh, to load the template and all that good stuff. Um, basically render whichever either form or that widget to ch choose to subscribe or register, I mean to log in or register. Uh, so it's been a long session. I'll try to keep this brief. <clears throat> so if that is present, then we're gonna process a registration form. If the user is registering, if register is true, we're gonna send the request into this method or uh, function to um, process the registration form. Otherwise, we're processing a subscription form. We're fairly confident that if there's a post request to this URL um, and they're not registering, then they're subscribing. Well, maybe that's a little bit too strong of an assumption, but uh, otherwise I think it'll throw a 500 error in production. So for the processing registration form, I believe I still, since I'm in another function, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in a serve context now, I need to import this user registration form. I take the post data and I instantiate a user registration form. Check if it's valid. Since we're registering a user, then I can save the form and it returns a user and I can log that user in and redirect to the subscribe page without any, art, without any query string. That's where they can begin the subscription process. And this took a long time for me to figure out over an hour, it was quite weird. I was making mistakes. Um, the examples I was using maybe um, had some errors in them also. I'm not sure that, mm, I'll take most of the, the credit here though for the mistakes. All right, cool. <laughs> so then just to re, um, kind of review the previous code as it was written since I factored out into two parts. Um, when you're processing a subscription form, again, you import that form you take the request post and instantiate the form, validate it, grab the subscription. Here we're taking that ID and putting it, attaching it to the session variable so that we can send it to the payment processor screen. All of this is from a previous session. It's just been factored into two uh, functions for clarity. And if you notice here, I'm returning the return value from these functions. This also took me a little bit to figure out this redirect function that I'm using twice, it returns an HTTP uh, response redirect instance from Django and it needs to be handed off as the return value of this serve function otherwise uh, well Wagtail and Django can't serve anything. So that's about it. It's quite uh, quite a lot going on. We kind of got to deep dive into a little bit of how uh, Wagtail serves up pages and how users are registered and uh, it was a big learning experience but overall I think it's worth it and it's nice to be on the other side uh, of that challenging um, trial so to speak. So thanks for everybody who was in the um, Twitch live stream. 
Uh, if you're checking this out on YouTube, which I guess is the only place you would be checking it out, do feel free to leave any questions or comments uh, below, and I will try to respond to those promptly. Again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. There are so many groups on CodeBuddies.org. Really hope you uh, help you hope you take a look there. There's a lot uh, of opportunity to both learn from each other and also teach and guide and collaborate on cool projects. So, again, hope to see you around the CodeBuddies community. And thank you again for watching. Have a great day.